you know, I'm not really a fan of this video I'm making. Oof. Man, if it wasn't for coffee, I don't know how far I would have gone. Especially this year, man. Well, which happens to be the subject of this video. 2022 has just been like a very long night. But it's August now and I think that's uh, that's like before dawn. <laughs> anyway, Alexandre Dumas, the author behind The Count of Monte Cristo, The Three Musketeers, a very great guy, said, there is neither joy nor grief in the world. There is just the comparison of one to the other. One who has one who has experienced the deepest of griefs is capable because of that to experience great amounts of joy and um, that is why i'm making this video uh, because i know and i have done this before i know i'm just gonna be so cr crazy watching this video in the future i'm just gonna go crazy watching myself and thinking about how friggin suffering i was when i made that video which is now <laughs> dude I have been waking up and studying or writing every day this year. Literally every day I do the same thing. I smoke a joint. If I do that morning, I clean my teeth. I come back to the room. I make a cup of coffee and I bury myself in books. Because well, I lost my job in February. Yeah, they fired me, bro. Gave me the boot in the ass. <laughs> And uh, since then, I have just been broke and in debt. Debt actually I made when I still had a job. Um, so, so it's just been crazy. But one thing I'm grateful for though is that I have been able to maintain a satisfyingly decent relationship with my creditors. You know, I've been able to pay them off to their satisfaction, which I'm so grateful to Jesus for that. But paying them off has left me with nothing for myself and my own responsibilities. Like my baby. I cannot believe I'm about to say this on video, but she called me in June and she told me she was cold. I couldn't clothe her. That hurt me, but it was nothing to her calling me last month and telling me she had to drop out of school because I ain't paid. I can't even believe that's my reality. I'm grateful that that's my reality because no great man I know has not gone through such a pressure. I was watching David Solomon the other day from Goldman Sachs and he talks about how he lost his job and he had to forge his head in a tough, tough spot. And I just finished reading Seamus Henney's Poetics, Professing Poetry, and the entire book, like Jordan Peterson's book, is all hammering on the concept that life inevitably is suffering. And I am so grateful of the perspective I have towards my suffering, because if it wasn't for it, I would not have made it this far. Dude, to have to watch my ca my car grow grass on wheels like that to see it slowly almost decay in front of me and to take in the judgment that I know comes from the people who walk past and they see it like that god it's just it's incredible but all the problems I have always just go back to Oh my goodness, is this really who I am? I cannot believe that. When I watch movies now, I gravitate towards the fathers. It's a side of me. I, I, I'm i so grateful for it, dude. I was watching Coming to America for the first time last night. I was looking at the father of that little girl, Leah, and I thought, wait, was it Leah? I think I'm confusing movies now. <laughs> Anyway, I was watching The Father on Coming to America and I thought, oh, I understand you wanting your daughter to marry a rich man because life gets tough and you want to protect these little girls. I have a daughter too. And I was watching Ford versus Ferrari again. And for the first time, 
I looked at Ken Miles from a very different perspective than the one I, I saw him with when I saw the movie for the first time. When he lost his job and he said, I'll figure something out, I could, I could almost embody him saying, I'm going to figure something out and you have no clue what you're going to figure. You only say that for the sake of saying it. I'm going to figure something out. It's, it's incredible what has been happening to me. And David Solomon says him losing a job was a humbling experience, but it was a great learning experience. And I agree 100%. 100%. Jason Zwick from Benjamin Graham's The Intelligent Investor says, When you make plans for the future, by all means, lower your standards. At least take care not to depress your spirit. And I take full responsibility for the plans I made, man. And I'm still grateful to Jesus that he's been able to provide in my stupidity. I really am. And I am so grateful for that. So grateful for Jesus, man. I'm grateful that, that the call was that she dropped out of school, not that she was admitted to hospital. You know, the reality is that she's out of school, not that she's sick. Always in need of a surgery I can't pay for, you know. When I think about that, my gratitude just grows. You know, I, I just... I really can't wrap my head around the things that go through my head in this pressure that I'm going through and when I watch this film whenever it is I'm gonna watch it maybe December <laughs> maybe next year 2023 maybe five years to come I remember waking up thinking dude what if I get to live five more years how different is gonna is gonna how different is my life gonna be in 25 years did I say five or 25 shit I am blabbing I think I should stop making the video now. And go back to studying. Okay, but let's end it on a nice note. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna end it with proverbs. We may make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. That is a weird reality as Christians that we have to bear. <laughs> and then the same God looks at, us, looks at us with stern and he says, all your actions will have consequences. And then he still says, I will determine your steps. I should stop talking.